Okay, morning Rory, welcome. Good morning. Uh, your fifth Ryder Cup before the age of 30. Just uh, start with giving us your thoughts on, on the week ahead and uh, being part of this European team. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've been excited for this for basically since the last day in Hazeltine whenever we weren't the ones that were spraying champagne uh, for a change. So, yeah, I've, I've been excited for it. You know, I, I've, I've really loved being a part of the process. Um, you know, the dialogue I've had with Thomas over the past few months has been great and seeing the, the team take shape and, and everyone that's, uh, that's played their way on. Um, it's exciting, you know, it, it doesn't seem that it's been that long that this is going to be my fifth Ryder Cup, but um, they've all been wonderful experiences for different reasons, and uh, I'm sure this time will be no different. Thanks, Rory. We'll go straight into some questions. Would you like to use the microphones and raise your hands? Start with Doug on microphone three, please. Rory, in the, in the times you've played in the Ryder Cup, what have you seen as the strength of Europe? And in part of a twofold part, um, if this is said to be a strong U.S. team, in your mind, what makes them strong? Uh, yeah, I think that the strength of Europe has been, you know, we all, we all get behind one another and, you know, even whatever differences we may have, we put them to the side for, for this week and, and, we, and we're a cohesive unit and that's the way we try to be. Um, and I think that's obviously served us well for the Ryder Cups that we've, you know, ha had success in, you know, especially in the, um, you know, the last few years, going back to, I guess, the Belfry in 02 um, and all the way through, it's been a, you know, the Euro Europe has had a, a pretty good run. Uh, obviously, there's been a couple losses in there as well, which is to be expected. You're playing, you know, the best players, not just in America, but, you know, they're, they're some, they're, you know, most of the best players in the world. So, um, obviously, you're going to win some and you're going to lose some, and we've won a little more than we've lost the last last few years. But as you said, the American team is very strong, uh, and I think again, it's I, you know the dynamic of the American team has become a little more cohesive in the last few years, um, and I think that's to do with the younger guys coming on board and really embracing the Ryder Cup and making it a very important part of their careers. Um, and they, you know, you've, you've seen, you know, Jordan and Ricky and JT and, you know, those guys, they, they hang, out, hang out together, they, they spend a lot of time together and, you know, it seems like the togetherness is just a little bit more there than it that maybe used to be back in the um, 90s and, and early 2000s. Got a Rick on microphone four, please. Rory. Uh you obviously played in big Sundays before, but I just wonder, was there any element of intimidation on Sunday? Um, that East Lake rough was really tough, yeah. <laughs> that was the most intimidating part about it. Um, started hitting a few drives left and right early, and uh, you know, I, I didn't actually have quite a good view from the trees on Sunday. I couldn't really see what was happening too much. Chris, in Mike 3 down the front. Hey, Rory. Um, can you remember your first shot uh, on, in a Ryder Cup on the first tee? And can you talk about that dynamic, about how different that is, that feeling that goes through your body? And f going forward, this is the largest gallery you're going to ever have on a first tee here. What, what do you make of this setup here? Yeah, um, good thing it's an easy tee shot. <laughs> uh, no, I, yeah, Celtic Manor, I, I guess I didn't. You know, going into my first Ryder Cup, I didn't know what all the fuss was about. You know, I still thought it was, you know, this team event that really doesn't matter in the big scheme of things. And, um, you know, I was more concerned about individual titles and all that. And once I got onto that first team on Friday morning, I thought, oh, this is, this is a little different than I expected. Um, I was very nervous. I, I still, like, I still get nerves on the first team no matter what tournament it is. So that's something that you know, maybe happens to me more than other people, I don't know, but um, it's nerve-wracking, you know, you, you try and put your ball on that tee and, you know, it takes you a couple of times to get it to settle on there, um, and I'm sure Friday morning, if I'm playing, will be no different. Um, it's a huge grandstand, you know, playing a practice round yesterday, you know, there was basically no people in it, and I still got goosebumps looking at it and, and thinking on, on Friday this thing's going to be, going to be packed, so... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. It's always, it's, it's become one of the very, 
you know, special things about the Ryder Cup is that is that first tee experience on Friday morning. I'm going to microphone four. Is it Brian? Um, two things. When when you hear that U.S. hasn't won over here 25 years, is that surprising to you? And, and secondly, what's the the challenge um, aside from maybe the crowd differences of, of playing on the road in the Ryder Cup? Yeah, I mean, I. It is surprising. 25 years is a, is a pretty long time. I guess that's what, 12 Ryder Cups. Um, it's, it is. It's tough. I mean, I, I think playing on the road is, you know, is increasingly becoming more, you know, increasingly difficult with um, how partisan the crowds are and, and how the crowds get behind their teams. And, th and that's all a part of it. It's the same thing in, in any other sport you have road games that are very difficult. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how, you know, I think, thinking back to Medina in 2012, like we were 10-6 down on, you know, it, it was a long shot that we were going to win that, and, and we ended up doing that, which was very special, but that, that could have started a run of, you know, home victories for, for each team. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, it, it has, it is tough and, and, you know, the adjustments, I think not having that week in between to recover, go, coming straight from, the, you know, I think I counted something like 17 of the 24 players came straight from the Tour Championship last week. So, you know, getting in on Monday and, and, and obviously we have the extra day, we're not starting until Friday, but, you know, it's a, you know, the journey over and then, you know, a little bit of jet lag built in, all that sort of stuff. You you know you need to do the right things, you know, yesterday, today, tomorrow to, to be able to play on on Friday. So, I think that has has a, a big part to do with it. Um, and then you know we do have a little more control of the golf course. You know you know the way Hazeltine was set up is not the way this is set up, uh, which is not the way Medina is set up. So, you know there is certain differences that that you know. You can try to do the, the play into the, the home the home team's advantage, I guess. We have a microphone too on the right hand side, Rory. Morning, Rory. Um, I want to ask about one of the five rookies, uh, John Ram. You've you've played uh, quite a few rounds of uh, practice rounds during the year with him. I believe that there's even a fair chance that you, you might even get to play together this week. Um, could you tell us what can we expect about John? Do you think uh, he can follow the steps of, of the great Spanish players? That have, have played so so well in the Ryder Cup. Thank you. I certainly hope so. Um, you know, he definitely has the fire of a of a Seve, um, and you know he's got you know he's got that passion that that the Spanish are, are known for. Um, you know, we've had this WhatsApp group going, uh, all the the Ryder Cup players and vice captains and captain for the last few weeks, and um, I've been pleasantly surprised that. John's input into it. Um, I guess, you know, I, I met, I only met John a couple of years ago, but, you know, the first time I heard of him was through the college system in the U.S. You know, he lives in Arizona now. It's, you know, and he's obviously very friendly with a lot of the guys on the U.S. team, especially the ones that live over on the West Coast. You know, Tim, Tim Mickelson was his uh, college coach, so he's very close to Phil. So, you know, to see how much he wants this and how he cares about the Ryder Cup and how proud he is to be European and to be Spanish and to, to really be a part of this has been, it's been really cool to see. Um, you know, I, I wasn't quite as vocal in my first Ryder Cup as he's been, but I wasn't as good a player in my first Ryder Cup as he is. So um, I, I'm expecting some great things from John this week. I played 18 holes with him yesterday. He seems to be playing really well. Um, and if we if we do play together at some point, that would be something I'd really look forward to. I have a question on microphone one. Rory, is there a general characteristic of a European Ryder Cup course or European Ryder Cup setup that makes it different from what you usually see when it's in the U.S., or does it all feel just completely different every time? Yeah, I think it plays, you know, you get punished if you hit it offline. Um, I feel like at Hazeltine, the punishment wasn't high enough if you hit it offline, and um, I guess that you know sometimes plays into 
some of the Americans' hands because they have guys that just hit it so long and you know you can stand up and wheel driver and that's not like I'm probably one of those guys you know so it doesn't quite play into my hands but um, I think for the bulk of the European team it it would be a little bit you know they'd welcome a setup more of this style I'm um, not saying that the American guys can't hit it in the fairway they're all the, you know some of the best players in the world but I think just looking at it um, it would seem the style of golf course is more familiar to us than than something like we saw at Hazeltine last time. I'm going to stay on microphone one there. Um, Rory, you obviously had a close-up view of Tiger on Sunday. Um, how much do you and the rest of the players relish the challenge of playing Tiger? And do you think, bearing in mind he's obviously not had a great record in the Ryder Cup, do you think we might see a slightly different Tiger Woods, bearing in mind what he's been through over the last few years? Look at this week he's one of 12. You know, we're not looking at any individuals. We're just trying to beat the U.S. team. Um, it's great what he did on Sunday. It was great for golf. It, you know, it, it brings a lot of excitement to the game. But um, I think to to focus on one player is, is silly, especially when, you know, I mightn't even see him this week at any point because, you know, I mightn't be on the course with him or, or play against him. So, you know, I... You know, I don't really want to speculate how he's going to play or what he's going to do. Um, I think it's great for the U.S. team that, that he's in the mix, and it's, it's, it's great that it's given their team a little bit of momentum coming over here. But, um, you know, we're, we're, looking to, to beat the, we're looking to beat the U.S. team. We're not looking to just beat Tiger Woods. I'm going to microphone two, Phil, please. Rory, you're obviously still clinging on to your 20s, and there's quite a few players in this team that are in their 40s, but do you feel that you're another, a leader again this time and are you happy to take that role this week? Yeah, um, look, whatever, whatever the guys want me to do or whatever Thomas you know, thinks my role should be, that's, that's what I'm going to play. Um, I'm sure you know, I'll, I'll be one of the leaders. I think you, know, you, had, you have a lot of great players on the team that have played in a lot of Ryder Cups and, and you know, will put their hand up to be one of the leaders and, and to, to try to lead by example. You know, Justin Rose, who, you know, was number one in the world there just a couple of weeks ago, FedEx Cup winner. Um, you know, Sergio Garcia, Henrik Stenson. Um, you know, guys that have played in a lot of Ryder Cups and have had a lot of success individually and in team events. You know, I'm just, I'm just one of those guys, so... Um, I'm one of 12. I'll do whatever I can to help the team. Uh, you know, and I just you know, want to get ready and, and get prepared so that when I tee off on Friday morning, I'm going to be, I'm going to be ready to go and, and, and ready to play five if, if, if needed. I'm going to have on the left-hand side. Rory, Thomas yesterday was speaking about how Ian Poulter has this great rapport with the fans, but that Sergio's strength lies in the team room. Can you shed light on that, on what makes Sergio such a great asset for you guys in the room this week? Yeah, I mean, I, I think just everyone loves Sergio, um, at least in our team room. <laughs> um, so, you know, he, he is, he has been the heartbeat of our team for a while, and, and he has been a constant um, and I think a lot of these Ryder Cup teams, it's about continuity and, and sort of bringing the same mindset to each one. Uh, but he's, you know, he's great. He, he's fun loving. He, he likes to have fun. He, you know, he never lets the environment or the atmosphere get too serious. And I, I think that's one of the big things about European Ryder Cups over the past few years. We haven't, you know, we've you know, basically left, left any sort of egos at the door you know, and, and no one's allowed to, to have an ego or, or, you know, you know, even I know some of the guys talked to you about the, the video that was played for us the other night and, you know, some of the, the sketches and impersonations of all of us. And I mean, it was, it's brilliant. You know, it's great to be able to poke fun at yourself. And, and I think the more you can keep that atmosphere in the team room, the better. And, and Sergio was great at, at, bringing that, that atmosphere into the team room and just bringing that dynamic to, to everyone else. Microphone three down the front. Belgium newspaper. Uh, you had last time in Hazeltine, you had a great pairing with uh, Thomas Peters. How do you look back on uh, that moment? And who would, who would you like to have your new partner? Uh, yeah, look, it was, 
it was a weird one because Thomas and I didn't actually play a practice round together at Hazeltine. It was sort of a bit of a throw us together at the last moment and see how it goes. Um, but we knew that our, the way we both play the game, our, our, our games matched up pretty well. Uh, and it, it seemed to work. You know, it obviously did work. We, we played great. We won the, the three matches that we played. Um, played with each other. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I'd love to, to find another partner that, um, that I could go so well with again this week. And, you know, I'm not going to give away who we're going to be playing with or our pairings or anything. I mean, you'll see who we practice with on the, on the course each day, and, you know, you can figure it out from there. I'm going to have to go to the last question at Tim right the back. Rory, uh, the adrenaline level uh, in your match with Reed was, was clearly off the charts. I wanted you to speak to <clears throat> whether you were surprised you could play golf at that type of level when you were both so jacked up. I could play it for nine holes, and then it suddenly hit me. Um, the, the level sort of declined after that, and it sort of reached its crescendo on the eighth green, and then the last 10 holes wasn't quite as good. But, uh, you know, I look back at those videos, and I look back at the last Ryder Cup, and it wasn't just Sunday. It was Friday and Saturday. I mean, surprised I had a voice left at the end of the, the week. Um, it, it, it looked tiring to, to have to play golf like that for three days. So I think I learned a lot from that and learned that, you know, it's good to get excited and it's good to, you know, to have that. But at the same time, if, if, I, if I need and have to be called upon to play a late match on Sunday or whatever it is, I want to have all my energy in reserve so that I can give everything for 18 holes because I, I did hit a wall that back nine on Sunday and it, it cost me. Okay, Rory, thanks for joining us. We wish you well this week. Thank you.